I'm Anna Maria Ash. And I'm Graham Miller. This is London Today. Cleaning up in North London after a night of bombs. And in sport, John Salako celebrates his return to full-time action with a hat-trick for Palace against Stoke. First, the terrorists return to London. Six people were hurt as bombs went off in the busy Finchley Road in West Hampstead last night. Home Secretary Michael Howard has described the attack as contemptible and cowardly. No one yet has claimed responsibility. Louise Bevan reports now from the scene. In the cold light of day, the destruction caused by last night's triple bomb attack was chillingly apparent. Just six minutes after a telephoned warning was made to this pizza takeaway, the explosions began. A friend of ours was um, across the road in, in Domino's Pizza and um, heard the call come through. Um, she thought that they said four bombs and her boyfriend thought that they said three. So they still went ashore and, and as they were leaving, um, they were crossing this road behind us and the explosion happened just behind them. Target one was a building society in Finchley Road. Seconds later, a nearby office block was hit. Then there was a third blast by the underground station. A fourth device planted near Golders Green was detonated in a controlled explosion. People were extremely distressed. Uh, pedestrians were running everywhere. Nobody really knew what, what had happened. Um, so, of course, it, I, I'm just absolutely delighted that, that the injuries were only, were only minor injuries. The inadequate warning given by the bombers was, say police, a cynical attempt to kill and maim. In the event, and possibly due to heavy rain and fewer people around, it was a miracle the casualty list was so short. In Hampstead, this is Louise Bevan for London Today. A school at the centre of an asbestos scare has been given the all clear. 1,200 schoolgirls were sent home from Plumstead Manor School in South East London after a teacher fell ill with what's believed to be an asbestos-related disease. But tests have revealed the school is safe. It will reopen on Tuesday. Six people, including an escaped prisoner, have appeared before magistrates charged with conspiracy to supply cannabis worth more than £2 million. They were arrested after police raids on properties in South East London and Kent on Thursday. Camberwell magistrates remanded one man on bail. The other five were remanded in custody for a week. And now we'll take a look. We can go on with another story. Uh, the appalling weather conditions that have been sweeping the South East. The London Weather Centre has issued a severe weather alert with the warning of a further storm tonight. We're going to leave that weather story and move on to another one. We're going to give congratulations to a couple from Crawley who were married today. And you may ask what's unusual about that. Well, they're both pensioners with a 153 years between them. Ken Andrew, as usual, invited himself along. Here they are, the frisky pensioners who prove that love and marriage isn't just a province of the young. Ida is 77, Alf her toy boy at 76. They're both widowers, but even second time round, you could forgive Ida for being a little nervous. May not be joining next time. To Alfred Atwell Blackburn. To Alfred Atwell Blackburn. Alfred Atwell Alf, a former welder, made sure there was a good polish on the piece of metal he put on Ida's finger, and then even with the registrar trying to finish the ceremony, the eager couple couldn't wait for the vital moment. Well, having made the declarations that complete... If you think young, you remain young. And you have to try to understand the young people, as the young people should try to understand the old people. And everything's still in full working order? Uh, oh, yeah, punching all cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, thanks very much. Absolutely. In Crawley, this is Ken Andrew for London Today. Now we'll take a look at all the sports news with Graham Miller. Graham. Football League action coming up, but first is the Premiership. Liverpool against Arsenal was billed as the match of the day, but it ended in a disappointing goalless draw. West Ham started early this afternoon because their floodlights were out of action, and Trevor Morley lit up Upton Park with the winning goal. Dennis Wise added to Chelsea's misery. The blue skipper was sent off. So final score, West Ham 1, Chelsea 0. Wimbledon's Joe Kinnear was named Manager of the Month this morning. I bet he wishes it was still August. The Dons were two down at Leeds within 20 minutes. And Queen's Park Rangers beat Ipswich three goals to nil. Crystal Palace were hoping to regain top spot in the first division this afternoon at Selhurst Park in their attempt to bounce back into the Premiership. The Eagles' opponents were Stoke City, who until today were undefeated away from home. 
Nick Clark reports. Palace are fresh back from a four-day trip to Portugal and they've clearly enjoyed the break. Gareth Southgate opened the account in the 24th minute. The Selhurst Park erupted when John Salago, out of action for almost a year through injury, got on the end of a great move to score the second. In the closing stages of the first half, Stoke besieged the Palace goal, but Nigel Martin was equal to the assault. And then just before half-time, a defensive blunder gave Salako his second. Well, Stoke in the second half faced with a formidable task, nearly made even more difficult by the eager Salako, hungry for his hat-trick. But the Potters battled away and created chances. Nigel Gleghorn sent through a dream of a pass, but Mark Steen knew the opportunity. However, a consolation goal was always on the cards. Eventually it came, Mark Steen this time doing it right. But there was more to come from Salako. He wanted three and three he got. John Salako is back. Final score, Palace four, Stoke one. At Molyneux, Charlton in red looking to keep up their challenge at the top had Phil Chappell to thank early on against Wolves. Good clearance. The chances at the other end were few. This was a good one, though. Gary Nelson's finish just wasn't up to the build-up. Charlton were lucky to go in level at half-time when after a smart move from Wolves, Mike Small just failed to make contact with his diving header. Charlton should have broken the deadlock early in the second half. Carl Lieburn passed his fitness test before kickoff, but cracked that header against the bar. A moment later, Mike Salmon was in the action to keep Wolves out, but how Small missed that one, we'll never know. Charlton were reeling, and just on the hour, Wolves took the lead. Kevin Keane is the scorer. Wolves won, Charlton nil. It forced Charlton to step up a gear, and just before the whistle, they got a deserved equaliser. Defender Phil Chappell driving it in. Millwall hadn't scored a goal in their previous five games. Against Watford this afternoon, they scored two in the opening quarter of an hour. Don Goodman opening the scoring. He followed that up with a second after some dreadful Watford defending on the part of Keith Dublin. The Lions continued to roar after the break. Andy Roberts making it three, the new den going wild. And Goodman completed his hat-trick in the 74th minute. Watford earned a late consolation through Lee Nogan. The final score, Millwall 4, Watford 1. Southend were embroiled in a top-of-the-table clash with Tranmere at Roots Hall, and it was a disappointing day for Barry Fry. Southend 1, Tranmere 2. And at Kenilworth Road, the score was Luton 5, Barnsley 0. Barnsley's Jerry Taggart sent off for a professional foul before the route began. Fulham and Leighton Orient met at Craven Cottage this afternoon, both looking to improve on a lacklustre start to the season. The Cottagers went into the lead thanks to a first-half goal from Sean Farrell. But the O's hit back. They equalised just before half-time through Trevor Putney. That game at Craven Cottage ended Fulham 2, Leighton Orient 3. Barnet went into their match with Bristol Rovers, still looking for their first league points. They survived a goalless first half, but it ended Barnet 1, Bristol Rovers 2. Brentford travelled up the M11 to Cambridge. The result of the Abbey, Cambridge 1, Brentford 1. Reading needed a last gasp equaliser last night to earn themselves a point against Swansea. Swansea looked to be on their way to victory at the Vetch field with a goal from recalled striker Andy McFarlane. But Reading's new German striker, Uwe Hartenberger, marked his debut with a late equaliser, capitalising on the defensive error. So, final score, Swansea 1, Reading 1. And today, Chesterfield were Wickham's host this afternoon. The final score, Chesterfield 2, Wickham got it, they got 3. That's it. Thanks very much, Graham. Now then, we can go back to that story about the appalling weather conditions that have been sweeping the southeast. The London Weather Centre has issued a severe weather alert with the warning of further storms tonight. In Surrey, rivers have burst their banks and hundreds of homes have been flooded. Mark Jordan reports on a day of mopping up and bolting down. It's October 2nd. The average rainfall for the entire month has already fallen on Surrey. Drains that can't cope and a river burst its banks. This pub is flooded out and they've been told to expect more rain tonight. Meanwhile, treacherous motoring conditions reduced two cars and a van to this near Lingfield. All passengers are still alive. Two of them had to be cut out of the wreckage. Not all victims had homes to worry about. London is the city thousands of tourists dreamt about, 
and are now drenched in. The sightseeing goes on. Is this the London you saved for and dreamed of visiting? No, sorry. <laughs> My very fashionable hat. More like a paddy field than the world-famous Oval, that meant the equally famous Boston Red Sox weren't able to play baseball there this afternoon. For others, days of rain have hit the pocket. So you've been standing here for three quid for seven hours? Seven hours, yeah. yeah. So you're waiting for the rain to stop? We're going to be on soaking ring in wet. Well, those are the brave ones. Others packed up earlier and called it a bad day. But one man's ruin is another man's living. Across London, roofers are busy repairing hundreds of leaking roofs. We can't say we're not uh, unhappy about it. And it's not over yet. A severe weather warning warns more rain on its way. This is Mark Jordan for London Today. And that's the news and sports so far this afternoon. We'll be back tomorrow at 12.30 in Crosstalk when our political editor, Peter Allen, will be talking to Enfield MP and Treasury Secretary Michael Portillo about the effects of putting VAT on your fuel bills. Until then, from both of us, good evening. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. We will get some breaks in the cloud as we head towards evening and into the night with showers becoming isolated to eastern coastal districts. Tomorrow then after those showers have cleared, it will become bright for a time but then we'll get some more cloud rolling in from the west of the region. Top temperature tomorrow is 16 Celsius, that's 61 Fahrenheit. ITV tonight at 5 past 7, take the love train and find out if these blind date couples make a match or simply get caught out. Desperately seeking sexy cricketer. <laughs> All will be revealed tonight at 5 past 7. Trouble for Midge after a daring rescue mission in New Baywatch, next on LWT. Saucier scandals and exposés, and this Sunday, a bumper birthday issue of the News of the World. A free copy of our first ever edition for every reader, and part one of a fascinating guide to the collectibles in your home. We've been at it for 150 years. Happy birthday to the News of the World, Britain's most popular paper. What better time to buy a new golf? Call 0800 333 6 for full written details. For Steven Spielberg and Roy Scheider, Jaws is the past. Make way for the future. Sequest DSB. Tonight, nobody will ever take me off that ring. ITV 605 tonight. Tonight, 